Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about severe weather, wildfires, an upcoming heat wave, and a tropical disturbance that looks to have potential US impacts. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your overall uh, map this morning for August the 8th. What we're looking at here is this boundary. This is the separation from some drier and more unstable air mass. And it's kicking off some stronger storms uh, this morning. They've already had a lot of heavier rain uh, yesterday in portions of uh, Minneapolis, getting into uh, central parts of Wisconsin, going into Michigan. And then this this what they call back builds down to the south as well. And there's got some instability south of Kansas City, going into portions of Oklahoma. And it actually extends all the way down in portions of the Wichita Falls uh, area. So if we take a look at some of the lightning display underneath that, we've got uh, some lightning happening this morning and uh, central portions of uh, Minnesota going in right here in the central portions of Wisconsin, as well as into uh, Michigan. And like I mentioned, down here to the south here, it does fishtail and back build. We've got kind of sporadic uh, lightning, lightning displays. Uh, you know, in portions of Oklahoma as well as uh, Kansas. And then we have some some lightning up here in uh, uh, Idaho as well as uh, Montana with this other little system that we'll be talking about as well. So, but if you take a look at the rainfall for the last 24 hours, uh, some of these amounts are pretty impressive. They dealt with a lot of flash flooding yesterday in the overnight hours. And right here is four inches uh, right around you know, portions in and around the Milwaukee area, this whole area is gonna be inundated this, this morning and actually gonna be inundated for several days to come with some heavier rain as troughs come across. We did it, we were able to pick up a little bit of precipitation in far extremes of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, there's the monsoon, it's kind of dying off, but it looks to come back uh, late in the period. But here's, your, this is your overall 24 hour uh, rainfall totals for the last, uh, you know, go up till 7 a.m. this morning. If you take a look at the storm reports as well, here's where what happened yesterday. Of course, this is all preliminary data. The National Weather Service is still out surveying the damage, but we, we did uh, have uh, two tornadoes reported in portions of uh, uh, Wisconsin yesterday. And then also some wind and hail reports as well uh, that we talked about uh, where, that, where that instability would lie. Uh, and, it, and, I, and I'll go over some of the severe weather that's going to be happening over the next uh, several days. So a lot of the same places uh, it looks to be hit uh, over the next in the coming days. Here's your hazard look this morning. Uh, we're going to find what we're going to find is is the ridge is going to be slowly building. We got some cooler air we're, we're, we're finding ourselves in in the Pacific Northwest this morning, but that's rapidly going to change in a big way. We've got excessive heat watches. And then uh, red flag warnings as well. With all those wildfires happening, the winds are going to start start to kick up uh, later on this afternoon into portions of Montana as well as uh, Wyoming. And we're starting to get even heat advisories again in portions of Texas as the winds turn around. We still have high dew points down here. So as with the temperature, as the heat index goes above 105, that is your heat index, uh, you know, criteria area, and that's why they've issued that heat advisory. And there's your flash flood watch. That's where they picked up the four inches of rain yesterday, and they're still going to be getting some rain uh, today and even into the coming days as well. So let's take a look at where the wildfires are currently. And there's a lot of them out there, guys. And it's it, what's to come for the Pacific Northwest is not a good combination because we've got low humidity on the way. We've got higher winds and the temperatures are going to be surging uh, as we get towards midweek. And so, yes, these are all the wildfires in the, the reds and the yellow and the, and the orange shaded areas here of all the, all the different wildfires happening right now. And it's gonna be a while before all these are gonna be able to really you know, come, come to an end. So let's take a look at the big picture of what's happening for much of the week. So what, what we're basically gonna be finding is, is the winds are gonna be turned around from the south. With that south wind, the ridge is gonna be starting to build. We're slowly gonna be heating up throughout the week. All the instability is well to the north. This is portions of Canada. There is Alaska. Underneath these greens and bluer areas, that is your colder air, colder air mass 
underneath the trough and these are going to be circling around and pieces of it is going to be in in the far extreme northern interior of the united states and that's why it's going to have that instability and that's where we're going to be finding our uh, severe weather as well as as these troughs move across from west to east throughout the week the ridge is really going to be building in especially by wednesday that thursday time frame in the pacific northwest as temperatures soar back to the triple digits and that heat will just build over time as that trough winds have been and then we've got that colder air uh, filtering into Alaska, and you're going to be below average for much of the week, and if not almost cold by the time we get into uh, next weekend. So let's take a look what's happening down to the south, because we also have disturbances to talk about as well. Yesterday, we had a in yellow, so we had some bananas out there, and now we got oranges, right? They have actually upgraded this to areas of 40% of possible development you can see where the trajectory of where these are going to be going over over time throughout the week and this all is going to be traveling west northwest bound and it's going to be impacting the lesser antilles probably going over puerto rico eventually getting over the turks and caicos area heading towards the bahamas and eventually probably getting in and around the south florida area by the time we get in that friday uh saturday time frame so let's take a look at the next uh, 24 hours and where the rainfall is going to be uh falling today like i mentioned we've got that little little instability underneath in the far extreme portions of idaho and montana with some rain for for them and then there's this main setup today where we're going to have that severe weather and some a lot of more heavier rain that's why they got the flash flood watches still in effect uh for portions of wisconsin getting into uh, iowa into illinois into missouri and that'll that'll fishtail all the way down into oklahoma uh as well as a just far extreme northern parts of arkansas down to the south you get these what they call diurnal heating uh daytime just heat driven thunderstorms essentially as we go into the peak heating of the day the atmosphere is able to turn over with south winds and taking advantage of these this moisture content and that's why you get sporadic thunderstorm isolated scatter activity uh you know down to the south we see the monsoon trying to come back a little bit as we're going to be talking about even in the pacific we still got a, a more tropical system and hurricanes uh, down to the south. It's still pretty active for them. So let's take a look at where the storms are going to be flying today. Uh, yeah, some of these could be strong to severe again in this, a lot of the same areas. So places like Kansas City, getting into uh, Madison, going into uh, Overland Park, uh, Springfield, Missouri. You know, all these areas will be susceptible to seeing some of that damaging wind again. And some of that larger hailstones could be flying from the sky. And then underneath here, you do still have a marginal risk into Great Falls uh, portions of Montana here with those some of those stronger storms could be on the, on the gustier wind sides, especially with that red flag warning uh, later on this afternoon. So, but if we take a look for the overall for the next 48 hours, adding today and tomorrow, there's where the rain's gonna fly. Again, a lot of these areas where you have these little troughs that come from Canada, dipping down to the northern interiors of the states into, the, into uh, Idaho and Montana. Uh, there's your heavier rains anywhere from one to three inches, essentially from Missouri to uh, uh, Wisconsin, as well as Michigan. And then yes, we've got those sporadic, isolated, you know, scat scattered thunderstorms for portions of the of the southeast. So if we take a look at the uh, the severe weather for uh, your your uh, Monday time frame, that's where the setup's going to be uh, again as the troughs come down and dig in the far northern interiors parts. You have that instability with that clash in temperatures. So places then just like you know North Dakota, Bismarck, Minot. Uh, going into extreme northern parts of South Dakota could see some of that uh, severe weather. And then as it tails further south, it loses that some of that instability and it loses that severe, severe aspect as well. So not as intense, these more or less transfer to some gustier downburst winds as you get further, further to the south into portions of uh, Nebraska, you know, going to the day on Monday. There's your setup for Tuesday. As again, this trough, this boundary would continue to move across. We've got a lot of drier air moving in. So we're, that's why we're going to be heating up. I mean, you know, humidity values are going to be dropping into the teens. That is some dr very dry air as you get a dr the drier air, the hotter that gets. 
and that's a deadly combination for your wildfires as the temperatures will start soaring into the Pacific Northwest. But out ahead of it, we're going to have to be dealing with some of those strong to severe thunderstorms again. So we've got you know, multiple days to come for heavier rains and stronger storms in portions of uh, Wisconsin getting into uh, Michigan. This seems to be the bullseye, this area for the next several days as it's very active as these systems come across. There's your uh, high temperatures as we get into the day on Wednesday. Yes, the, the triple digits start to come back. I mean, you're probably talking like 75 degrees in Portland today, and you're probably going to be knocking on the door to 100 degrees by the time we get into Wednesday. So that's a rapid turnaround for you as the temperatures, as the atmosphere will start to dry out, as the humidity levels start to come out. Man, that's the prime combination or the temperature is going to be allowed to soar uh, into those uh, triple digit categories. Uh, we'll we'll stay in and around the uh, the upper 90s to if not near 100 degrees as the ridge will be firmly in place and the troughs are uh, you know highlighted you know well well to the north. So the only cool game in town is pretty much up in Canada because much of the United States on Wednesday is going to be easily into the 90 plus triple digit range. So there's your rain prospects on that Wednesday. Yes, these are all just daytime heating uh, thunderstorms activity. You see this instability down here. That is actually Tropical Storm Kevin that could actually be Hurricane Kevin by then. That is adding to that you know, monsoon flow here. And as these get stronger and as it is able to pull in a more you know moisture from the Pacific, that's what keeps the monsoon alive. So as this storm gets more active on Wednesday, it's going to be able to pull the moisture further north into uh, you know Arizona, getting into further north into New Mexico. As this system will pull up, this system will be able to pull in some of that uh, you know Pacific moisture further inland and into uh, those areas. So as we go into that Thursday time frame, yes, there's your high temperatures. Man, we're talking easily triple digits in this neck of the woods. If not, a, probably a lot of records are going to be starting to fall, fall and be broken by the time we get in that Thursday time frame. You can see the cooler air trying to sneak in from the north. Those are those troughs coming in on the backside. And it's got some cooler conditions. So where you're going to be, you know, near you know, upper 90s to if not 100 degrees, it's gonna be about a 20 degree drop as some of that cooler air will start to creep into the northern portions of North Dakota into Minnesota. And this will only eventually transfer into the Northeast, but you're gonna be dealing with much of the, the 90s, if not middle 90s, by the time we get into that Thursday time frame, And there's your rain prospects is more or less along the coast where you have that daytime heating, heat driven storms as you dry out as these systems kind of start to uh, peter out from the from the troughs up to the north and as the the heat will start to build out to the west uh you're going to be drying with that sinking air coming in on the on the back side there's your as the as more sinking air filters in more triple digits start showing up on the map you know 105 108 uh, easily triple digits you know maybe 106 type atmosphere uh, 105 in Portland, you could be looking at you probably three, maybe four days of triple digit heat, potentially from Wednesday all the way to really Saturday looks to be in and around 100, if not 105 uh, territory at times. So that is well above average for them as the heat will continue to remain uh, in effect. But by Friday, we're going to be having to look towards uh, the tropics as some of these systems down here into the Caribbean will be getting closer uh, to Florida. And that's why the radar is kind of depicting on some heavier, heavier rain trying to move in from the Bahamas, getting into uh, South Florida for them from that tropical disturbance that was highlighted at the beginning of the video that had a 40% chance of developing. So all throughout the week, it looks to continue west, northwest. It's probably gonna be impacting the Lesser Antilles area by the time we get in that Tuesday timeframe, probably the Puerto Rico area by Wednesday, uh, the Turk and Caicos area by uh, Thursday, the Bahamas as we get into that Friday time frame, and as we get into uh, Friday at Friday, uh, you know, afternoon, maybe Friday evening, it's probably going to be close to uh, southern parts of Florida by then with some heavier rain 
we'll just have to see if it's able to form into a tropical entity by then there were some signs of some low level circulation starting to try to form as i was trying to put this video together so yes there are there is a chance but the the, the mo models are not really that bullish it's just showing right now some instability and probably some heavier rains from this disturbance as this will get in and around near the south florida era by the time we get into that you know late friday probably saturday morning time frame uh you know as we get into next weekend but up to the north i showed you some of the colder air those troughs trying to filter into alaska and yeah that's actually snow that's going to be flying uh, you know going over the course of the next seven to ten days so it's not like that out of the ordinary to see snow in alaska as we get into that august time frame but that just kind of shows you uh, the, you know, the, you know, the, the fall is not that far away, guys. We've got snow already trying to fly into Alaska and eventually some of that cooler air will sink its sink a little bit further south as we go through time. So it's, it's in the building process currently. And I'll actually be doing my fall outlook probably sometime next weekend as uh, more data comes in. I'll be giving you a, a, a true depiction of what I think is going to come for that September, October, November uh, time frame for your fall outlook. So definitely stay tuned to that. But over the next uh, week, uh, this is the rain where I think it's going to fly for much of the Pacific Northwest, unfortunately, you're going to be drying out again as that heat will start to build over time. The only games in towns are underneath those troughs as it tails well to the north. So yes, you'll have some heavier rains into portions of uh, you know Idaho, far extremes into Montana. The main bullseye is going to be in Ida uh, Iowa. Uh, you know. Wisconsin here into Michigan, Illinois, portions of uh, Indiana and Ohio as these systems will come across. And then we'll have to look for that tropical disturbance uh, going to be impacting portions of South Florida, maybe Central Florida by the time we get into that late Friday, Saturday time frame with that tropical disturbance that we'll be tracking all week. And there's your monsoon flow for the next week as this will slowly get further to the north and i think this will only increase as we go into the following week as these there there's actually yet another system that will actually probably uh come a little bit closer uh to the baja of california and that will push the rain prospects further inland so i do feel uh you know this week is kind of subtle for the monsoon but next week i thought i think it really starts to get its act together again with more flash flooding uh on the table so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update wire protect you before and after the storm